What is up and welcome back to Unspecified Podcast and Review. Thank you so much for being here with us for another episode. Finally, we get to slow down, change gears, uh, and do a podcast. Um, and, you know, just for reference sake, um, it is Thursday, the 17th of September, 2020. It's about 3.49 in the morning for me, um, which is really just... 3.49 in the afternoon for me. Um, my schedule is absolutely flip-flopped. Uh, oh, happy birthday to me. It's my birthday. It is my birthday. Dossett is my birthday. And what are we going to do? We're going to say happy, happy birthday to me, and we're going to move right on past that. I am officially older, so let's get right into it. Violence in Portland. Violence on the streets of Portland for more than a hundred days, hundred nights. I know. Okay. I saw targeted shootings on police. Yes. No. Violent insurrectionists who may or may not be responsible for the fires across the West coast. Okay. Okay. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist or push doom and gloom, okay? But we do need to take it seriously because if it's true, it's a, it's it's very serious. It's very serious. Okay, forgive me. I need a sip of coffee. So let's get into it. How do you want to go at this? Think about it. Logistically, mathematically. How do you organize an orchestrate secretly to a mass, and it doesn't have to be a huge group of people now. We're only talking about three or four people per state that could do these operations. And if we're talking about fires, I think you get the gist. Uh, no, I'm not talking about that one video with a dude with a cell phone with the, you know, video of all that. What got me was the sheriff's deputy or the law enforcement officer in Oregon who said that it's it's, it's all Antifa, you know? It's all, uh, that they're causing problems up there. And I mean, golly, it's just unprecedented these times with a pandemic that really isn't a pandemic, right? I mean, sure, it exists, it spreads, um, you get sick, but wow, guys, the times we live in, you know, and and how they've gotten us to censor ourselves. And a lot of you are very bold in the fact that you will not be censored. You will not be changed or you will not conform to the woke radical left agenda. And I commend you for it. Keep pushing on. We are to be wise as serpents, but we should be as gentle as butterflies okay so we should be wise into their tricks and I think I smell a trick I have heard and it's only heard I even fear to repeat this because I don't want to cause any panic but Tim Poole reported on potential war in the streets that if Donald Trump wins November 4th. There will be a war in the streets. That shots will be fired. (sighs) Not going to happen. I I, I really don't see it. Not going to happen. I still have some more research to, to do before I make any serious, you know, What do I, you know, I've been asked that question for three months. What do I think? What do I think? What do I think when um, Trump will be reelected? Because I do believe Trump will be reelected. I think that there is a possibility that Biden will fake win or the numbers will be made to look like he won and we will have conflict from that. Um, I don't know how serious that conflict will get, but I need to do more research and and spend some time to get my thoughts together and to look into the situation to make a, a logical, you know, to make any kind of conclusion or statement 
of conclusion with validity. Forgive me. Just enjoying some uh, sugar cookie or cinnamon sugar cookie vape or something like that. Need my nicotine. It is Thursday, 17th. The 17th. Today is the day of the siege on the White House. The 55-day siege. <laughs> well, they've definitely shown that they can do t double that. They can double that. They can go for 110 days. It's almost as if they did a proof of concept between Chaz Chop and Portland. And, you know, well, here we go. Take it to the Capitol. What are we going to see? What are we going to see? How will the how how will this president react to what is coming today? Today it's early morning, okay? Early morning, Thursday the seventeenth. What an odd day to start a siege, a peaceful siege, mind you. But Kenosha was mostly peaceful, right? Fiery, but mostly peaceful. So what does a mostly peaceful siege look like? It's, it's going to be hell. Uh, they're going to play by the rules of the day, and they're going to go crazy at night, and I think we're going to see a repeat of what we saw in the beginning. Sorry about that. Desperately needed a vape. I'm also going to take a sip of coffee. When will we get normal back? Will we get normal back? Will we be able to shed this defund the police situation? Will we, will, as a country, will we be able to rid ourselves of this defund the police anarchy, insurrection? If we can, will, will, Will we be able to rid ourselves as a country of this pandemic? And, and not necessarily uh, the, the specific germ, okay, but the other kind of germ, all right, being drunkenness of power. Because that's the issue at hand. Overreach. We saw it, and then the riots start. Okay, they're overreaching. They're doing too much. We saw it. Then the riots start. And now we will beg, as we are, for the powers that be to come and save us from the anarchy. Use your iron fist. What's it there for? The problem is, is that the iron fist is truly blind. It's coming for everyone. Okay, it is a farce. Okay. African American people may be more harassed by the police, but the tyranny affects us all. Okay? It doesn't matter your age, race, creed, color, uh, financial status. Not if you're in the middle of a bad day. If you're in the middle of a bad day, it doesn't matter. Okay? I've seen wealthy, high end, all right, uh, upper middle class get taken down, okay? Even with their big lawyer, they still threw the book at them. I've seen it. We just got through this hurricane. It's officially my birthday. And now... On the 17th. Happy birthday. Woo. My birthday this year, of all years, 2020, actually marks the beginning of a 50-day siege on the White House. The very seat of power, if you will, for my country. And I'm a bigot if I love that country. It's infuriating. 
What have we let the, the radical left do in the guise of being polite? What have we done? What monster have we created through political correctness? What, what has political correctness done for our nation? Can someone let me know <laughs> other than push and drag us to where we are? I don't know, guys. Oh, what are we supposed to do? You know, because <laughs> can't do any calls for violence. Wouldn't want that. Wouldn't want that at all. No violence. No, no, no. Of course not. What we want is to go back to normal. But that's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I unfortunately... I don't think we're going to get normal back. Maybe. Hopefully. I think best case scenario, we're going to get normal back. We're going to get normal back, but it's it's going to be in under the guise of very strict rules. Guidelines. For national health. <laughs> Not security anymore. It's health. That's going to be the new normal. You should see the videos that they're putting out in Germany. Social programming. If, if, if one kid in a group of kids playing sees that one kid is sneezing or coughing, they're to warn all the other kids, Hey, this one's sick. Back up. Eject. They're like... Deploy mask. Deploy, deploy, deploy. You should see all the kids. They all, they like they've been, they quick draw their masks out and flop them open. And they put them on. Okay. And it's like, I don't know. It's unbelievable. It's unprecedented. It's got me thinking about a cabin with an outhouse. Deep, deep in the secluded wilderness, in the mountains, near a stream. <laughs> That's what I've been thinking about. Hence the fire. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. I can do what I want to, okay? If I want to have my first podcast with a fire as the background, that is what it will be. And it might just stay that way. <laughs> I, I really do. I like this cozy feeling. I really, guys, goals, squad goals, man. I need just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit of some secluded property, not much more than an acre, somewhere deep in the wilderness, away from all of this. I don't hate people, okay? I'm not one of those guys. I love everybody. I love everybody. Everybody just sucks right now. <laughs> the love for many has grown cold. Okay, no, nobody in the big city, you have to deal with so many people, so many terrible people by the time you get to where you're going that you're an asshole when you get to where you're going. Or maybe you're one of those that's just you just light up a room and you, you just do great when you get to where you're going. But you're an asshole until you get there because you have to deal with so many assholes. Oh, it's terrible. And I've said the A word too many times and that's fine. But I think you get my point. I'm thinking log cabin. Or not. doesn't have to be a log cabin. I don't mind building a house. Solar panels, a couple thousand gallons of water catchment, uh, you know, stuff like that. Chickens, maybe some different, uh, you know, maybe some uh, goats, some meat goats, some milk goats. <sighs> I imagine living in canopy. The trees are tall and the branches are long. And the and and the uh, fo the foliage and the leaves grow thick, as to cover and shield my little hideaway cabin. You know, I don't know. It just sounds so lovely and cozy, especially if it uh, snows or something like that. I've never been able to experience a cozy cabin hiding away from the the wails and the whips of the winds of winter outside. As I cozy up. With my wool blanket and my uh, fire, you know, with Tiff and a hot cup of coffee as we, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm sure we'll figure out something fun to do. 
uh, I really meant as in like I was going to say maybe we would be watching a movie or something like that. But if we're in a cabin, I'm not too sure how much access we're going to have to like your normal streaming services and all that. But uh, it's just a little fantasy, a little happy place I have in my head, a little cozy cabin in the middle of a blizzard with a terrible, terrible wisping, you know, whiteout outside. And uh, you're just you're you're kept safe inside these four walls inside this cabin with this fire and uh, your wool blanket and your hot cocoa or your your hot coffee, hot tea. Nice book. I think 2020 has got me ever more reinforced in the idea of independence, individuality, reminding me to get the heck away from all these people who are going to lose it. They are losing it, and we haven't even seen the half of it, (laughs) you know? I think that the left has had their turn. Will we see the right? Will we see the right go into oh, 110 days of violent insurrection as a response? Are we going to see a flip-flop? The right usually doesn't do that. Maybe they will. I don't know. We're dealing with a new generation, guys. Totally different generation. I'd really like to know what you guys think about it. And I'm so used to having a live chat to talk to that usually I can grab some, you know, ideas out of the chat. But uh, I guess we'll just have to read the comments on this one. As I take another sip of coffee and hit my vape once more. So what have we gained from political correctness? I'll tell you, I think what we gained was a narrow path. Isn't that odd? Doesn't that sound familiar? A narrow path to the destruction of our country via the radical ideals of the left. I think that's what political correctness has gotten us, was a narrow path. Very few would find that path. Very few would go down that path. The majority of us, I think, um, (laughs) you know, we do what we got to do to be professional, but that's about as far as our diplomacy goes. When we get home and we hang out with our friends or our family, you know, we're real people. And I think real recognizes real. And uh, it just breaks my heart to see what's happening to this country. I'm, and I don't sit here and say, oh, I'm scared for this country. Um, you should have been scared a long time ago for this country. You should have been scared for the country a long time ago. The bell rang already. The bell was the bell rang a long time ago. If you wanted to do something, you know, then was the time. Now it's just getting your family out and trying to keep them fed and comfortable for what's to come. Potentially famine, pestilence. Uh, you know, I hear rumors of food shortages. Haven't seen it yet. Haven't seen the pri- this prices skyrocket and all that. I, I, you know, then again, I'm very blessed to be sheltered. I don't often leave the house. I'm a certified hermit. I, uh, I can only view the world from a window. I, I don't get to get out and talk with folks. So there are things I, I have an interesting perspective, but then again, it's a very limited perspective. Um, I am only one guy with one life, one ex- one life experiences and one life choices to gain my you know views and conclusions on, and I try to do that based on my my foundation, which is I I well these are my pillars is that I believe in God, okay I believe that the only way to have a relationship with the, the that God, the God, is to accept his son as your savior okay and to believe on him and from there i believe that the purpose of your life is to find someone to love right find a way to provide for that person to the best of your ability and to continue as a man 
to become a better provider for both that person you love and your eventual children because you should have children, I believe. And if you don't, some people are called not to. And that's totally fine to each their own. But I think that here's another thing. We're going to switch gears from that. Switching gears. I had an interesting conversation with a friend, and he reminded me that all the conspiracy talk, all the backdoor deals, all the cigar smoke-filled rooms, plush leather chairs, and, and the crooked smiles, the lobbying, the corruption, all of this, you, all, you don't need to know about all of that. Sure, go do your research, but I'll promise you this, and it says it in the book, okay, the good book. It says that as your knowledge increases, so will your sorrow. So that's another thing. The more you know, the more sorrow you will find. Okay? Yes. It, it's so silly how simple everything here is. We don't have, we make it complicated. You know, we have to continually complicate. What's the simple answer to all your problems? Oh, I have all this anxiety. What do I do? Oh, uh, you, you first recognize that there's a God that is bigger and better than you. Uh, he created everything, and you can have a relationship with him if you believe on his son. You can have a relationship with the son as well. And the son is capable of miracles. He will be the king. He is the king, king of kings. And it's just so insane that you can give your anxiety, depression, and your problems. You can give it up, give it over. Seek him. Okay, like Chad always says, okay, God is the rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. If you earnestly seek him, he will reward you. He will take away everything because he sees you're the squeaky wheel. You're going to get the grease. Okay, you keep coming to him. All right. And if you and if you're not getting nothing out of it, then you're going to have to pray the dangerous prayer and you're going to have to figure out what's in your heart. That's keeping you from him. It is so much more simple than we want it to be. I digress. I know that people don't want to be preached at, and I don't want to preach at you. But if you if you want to fix things, it's very simple. Moving forward, changing gears. It is simple. We are complicated. So we must complicate, and we do complicate. Like I said, changing gears. Here we go. I think what we're going to see, Trump supporters are going to go out in masses on November 3rd. Okay? And they're going to vote in person, and there will be a Trump landslide. Absolutely. I 200% agree with that. But like I said earlier, both sides are preparing for corruption. Both sides are preparing for fraud, cheating, okay? The president himself said in an inter interview, I forget with who, that there are 80 million ballots being mailed out, okay? Dude, yes. My point is that Trump will win the electoral colleges. The electoral, the electoral college votes. His supporters will be out in droves voting in person. But then, what about those 80 million ballots? Okay, sure, I don't give a crap. Call it 20 million, call it 1 million, I don't care. Okay, but you're going to have a catastrophe. Okay, they will riot, they will, they're going to go nuts. It's going to be nuts. They will contest. And they still, they're still, the, the radical left is still clinging to the Russian collusion. Where's it all going? I don't really know. I'm just a guy with a laptop. I'm just a guy. I don't know anything. But I can smell the tides turning. And you're poking, and you're poking, and 
you know, I see law and order and Christianity and what's important is coming back. I see and smell a turning point. I think I think you guys do too. Maybe not to the degree that you see the left in their activism, if that's what you'll call it. Like I said, I don't know. I think you're going to see a Trump landslide, landslide and you're going to see contest. They're going to contest it. They're going to reject it. They're still clinging to Russian collusion. So, yeah, I mean, we got trouble on the horizon. You know, I, I messaged a very, very good friend of mine, and I was just like, uh, hey, man, man, I see bad weather on the horizon, if you get my meaning. And he's like, yeah, man, I see it too. I think we're all going to get wet on this one. And I was like, damn. Damn. And, and, and we're very good friends, and we haven't spoken for some time, so I just messaged him to touch base, to check in on him. <sighs> and, yeah, he um, we, we said very little. It was it, We didn't say very much at all. And we, we basically, in just a few sentences, touched on everything. And, and, you know, and that's all we really needed to say to each other was like, yeah, you see it coming too? So, uh, yeah, yeah, guys. A cabin covered in snow, okay? The whistling, whipping winds of winter outside, okay? Making me clutch to my wool blanket, all right? As I sip on my cocoa and read a good book with my wife and my children, yes. (laughs) No, I don't know, man. Escapism. (laughs) Real escapism. Not, Not fake escapism. Really getting out of it, you know? Um, Yeah. Yeah, guys. I uh, I hope you guys are uh, staying in, in good spirits in these times, these un the, these these unprecedented, unchartered uh, times. Uh, I hope that you guys are relying, and I hope you I hope you have faith. I hope your your people, you, those who are listening, I hope you have a faith um, that you can you know cling to for strength. I hope that you're practicing some meditation. Um, gonna be starting a diet here soon. I know I'm switching gears right now, but I just, you know, I feel like I've really laid it on thick. And um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it needs to be laid on thick. I promise I will not be so doom and gloom every podcast. But in this podcast, there were some serious things, very serious things happening in the world right now, especially. Uh, and it's just, it's just. It, jammed in my mind so that's what I'm talking about because that's what is not bothering me but that that's that's what's bothering all of us is these these stories and this bombardment with information and we're all basically depressed right because our knowledge is increasing on how things really work remember for that time people were waking up oh everybody's waking up you know everybody's going the sleeping giant's awake the sleeping giant's not awake Okay, it's, it's, you know, I, I really think, I don't know what I think, you know, I don't know where we're going. I think that you're going to see a Trump landslide, and I think you're going to see the left contest it, and I think that we should learn a lesson, if you've learned anything from political correctness and giving the left what it wants i think there's a lesson to learn here that we could all take and i'm talking about everybody okay i think we can all take it home maybe we all be a little more polite and we start backing what's actually truth and important uh I mean, we haven't even talked about the Constitution. Who gives a crap about the Constitution anymore, right? Huh? Is that just gone? Anything? I mean, golly. I can't believe. Yeah, no, nobody's thinking about the Constitution right now. Everything is just shaking, and we're waiting to see how it shakes out. (laughs) Oh, man. 
uh, so let's cut straight to it here. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Today marks the beginning of a 50-day siege on the White House. Bro fist to you guys. Much love. Thank you so much for being with us and listening today. I hope that you find some value in the podcast. If you'd like to see uh, more of me talking um, about other various subjects, please let me know in the comments down below or smash the like. Uh, If everybody smashes the like and it gets a lot of likes, that'll let me know something for sure. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, yeah, 50 day siege starting today. I hope you're all ready for it because those live streams of those of Riot Watch, uh, with the Riot Buddies and the Unspecified fam, here it comes. I don't know, at the very least, we're gonna have 55 days. Uh, we could break it down. What did we see in Washington before? We saw craziness, we saw lines of cops, we saw people, white people, pushing. Um, trying to get to the White House, and then eventually they put up a barricade. Um, right? Do you guys remember that? The riot shields first, the tear gas. Um, it was hardcore. Helicopters were coming down like less than 50 feet above the air uh, to intimidate little crowds of people. It was insane. If you don't believe me, I've got all the footage. It's it's on my YouTube channel here. Um, you can go back to the very beginning. The first two or three weeks were pretty insane. Um and I don't know what to expect from the siege. I know that they said that Kenosha was fiery, but mostly peaceful. So, you know. I, I don't think it's going to be very peaceful. At all. At all. And uh, I think, yeah, number one. Number one, first and foremost, I think that we should have prayers for this nation. Prayers for the nation as a whole. And then prayers for the left, because these people are hurt. They have a wound. They have been wounded, either willingly by nature or nurture. They are emotionally scarred, whether they're doing it to themselves. None of this matters, because what is, is, what is, is, it is what it is. These people are wounded emotionally. They're hurt. Hurt people hurt people. That's how it works. And that's what we're seeing. And so I just think that these folks need prayers. And and, and we need to pray for law and order. Um, And, and, you know, hey, I know, you know, everyone, all the bootlicker comments, guys. It's not that I'm a bootlicker, okay? I don't trust the state. I don't like authoritarian power given to any authority figure, okay? Because I thought that, you know, the Constitution was the supreme law of the land, not mandates. Okay, see, we got all we got all kind of stuff to get into here, so let's let's go ahead and cut it short. Uh, I'm just doing a little testy podcast here, just talking about some stuff. Um, bro, fist to you guys. I hope you like it. Let me know if you like it. Smash that like button, please. Smash the like button if you would like to communicate to me that you enjoy this setting and this podcast. Um, this is my very first actual pre-recorded podcast, um, all alone, all alone. I had to record it all alone. Um, well, because I had to get it done. I got to get it done. I got to put it out there. I want to try bro fist comment down below. Let me know if you like it or not. Let me know if there are other subjects you'd like to get into any requests. Don't forget to join the discord. Um, uh, ask for a Discord link in the comments, and I'll probably I'll, I will I, either I either I myself or one of my mods will drop a uh, I, I probably myself will will drop a Discord link. Any other links you may need will be in the description below this video. Um, I very much look forward to having you guys next time, and I'll see you on the next live stream. Hey, much love! Thank you for being here, Bro Fist. I'm out.